Welcome, dear readers, to Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I am Kay. And remember, we only judge a book by its cover. And we found ourselves once more amid the towering stacks, uh, the towering battlements, I should say, of the library. Yes, I noticed that. What's with the weird little battlement design with one of them higher than the other? So it's still a work in progress. There was a a little bit of a book collapse. Just to to catch the readers up on the unnecessary lore that has sprung up around this uh, literary podcast, last week you got me out of my my funk from that that I'd fallen into after losing an election that I didn't quite understand what it was for and you helped me to realize that the library probably has enemies that need to be uh, uh, defended against yeah. slash destroyed yes so I've, I've started with the unconventional ultimate idea that the best offense is a good defense okay book fort I'm going book back fort. to basics book fort is great yes exactly it, it looks great, but it's kind of like in the middle of the Great Hall. Yeah. And like, so by the time that this book fort is going to come into use, yeah, yeah, the yeah. invaders will already be in the main hall. And Aha. so it's more like a retreat, I guess, like a last bastion of last defense. Is that what I'm getting it right here? You are correct. Uh, well, I've also noticed think. that you've used this medieval siege books, which is very appropriate. It seems right. Yeah. Now, you'll notice where I've placed it, mm. which is the Roman history section. Yeah. Yeah, because I remembered how Caesar eventually defeated and captured the uh, the Gallic leader Vercingetorix, yeah. whom he besieged. And, you know, as I'm saying it, I'm starting to realize that there's a flaw to my plan, but let's let's work through it. Okay. So whom he besieged in a township which whose name I, I don't remember, but one, one small town continued to uh, yeah. resist the Roman mm-hmm. oppressors. And uh, Vercingetorix has sent for uh, reinforcements. So rather than retreat from this town, which he was unequipped to conquer, uh, Caesar had a, a stroke of brilliance. He had his soldiers chop down the remaining forest and built another wall around the ah, yes. Roman encampment besieging the Gauls uh, with the idea of defending themselves against the rest of the Gauls long enough for the trapped Gauls to starve and surrender. Ah. And once surrendered, they could walk out because Vercingetorix would have to surrender on behalf of his backup as well. Yeah, okay. And how's that going to work here in the library? Well, phase one is I've made my little township. What 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 sort of town name should we give this? This is going to be our little Gallic li- li- decor. Li- librarium. Li- librarium. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be, yeah, we're going to draw the enemy in. We're going to be ensconced in librarium. So come inside with me. Okay. Yeah, just under here, mind the drawbridge. Yeah. It's made of cardboard. You, yeah, okay. It's not a load-bearing I'm, structure. I'm not too worried about the uh, porticulus either, which seems to be made out of, out of cardboard tubes as well. I it's mean, it looks it's great, all cardboard yeah. all the way through. Okay. I'm, I'm mostly counting on the moat. I'm, to, sh- I'm uh, sure that the little librarianess will be thrilled by this. <laughs> yes, an endless series of tubes. And so once we're inside, now here is where there will be a tunnel that allows us to escape the yeah. immediate siege and build another siege around them, thereby trapping them. Oh, okay. offensive defense is what I'm saying. I was it's wondering layers what upon that layers. Long pile of books running outside the fort was like, but that's the tunnel. Yes. Well, okay. I didn't want. I, I didn't want to. Slash was able to dig through the. Like, oh, I appreciate got, that. You've got nice tiles here. Good flooring, isn't They're it? They're very resistant. Yeah. I've broken many a drill bit on those. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed. I I, I figured that the 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 tunnel system would work. I mean, this is also going to bring, give us some problems with the moat that I. I had planned yes. to be our main form of uh, defense. Not quite sure what's going to be the substitute for that, but hey, no. you know me. I'll figure mm, yes. something out well, with a ball of twine and some tape. Yeah, as long as it doesn't involve... I'm not going to say that I'm all right with it as long as it doesn't involve wet books, but I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be... I'll that's probably, my takeaway from this I'll, I'll conversation. I'll probably be less upset with it if it doesn't involve wet books. Okay, well, I'll try to reduce the book wetness. Yes, thank you. Preferably from- to zero to the absolute bare minimum required by my genius plan. Listen, listen, come on. This is for the defense of the library. No, okay. Slash offense against the the enemies. Hey, do you have any clues about like what kind of enemies I'll be I'll be facing? I don't know. I mean maybe the the, the Fahrenheit four fifty one police or just <sighs> generic book burners, people with Actual book burners? Yeah. Well, shit, a, for- a book fort isn't going to protect against those assholes, is it? Well, not unless you make them wet, but we were not going to do that. So. No, yeah. so that's the, end of, that's the end of my... It's a rubbish fort. Okay, I guess well... maybe the halon fire suppression system will work against that. Ah, okay, so then what we need is snorkels? Uh, breathing apparatus. Yeah, okay, so Compressed that would be uh, a, a, a skilba. Skilba? Self-contained inside library breathing apparatus. Oh right, yes. No, that 
That's very good. Yes, go. Why don't you go work on that? Okay, I can't help but notice like a little tone of condescension, but no. I'm choosing to no. I'm, I'll just take you at your word that it's not there, and let, uh, that's a that's a great idea. So that's my project for next week. I'm going to invent the skilba. Yes. You know, I once tried to figure out what scuba, which was invented by Jacques uh, Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau, thank you very much, Monsieur Cousteau, captain of the Calypso, who invented the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. More or less, yeah. What would it have been if he'd if that acronym had been French? Oh. God, my French isn't that good. I mean, right. We can probably work it out, but... So that'll be our, our... Actually, that can be our name for it next time. As soon as we figure out how the how to acronymize a breathing apparatus... A self-contained into... library and breathing apparatus That's in so French. Hard. And right. <laughs> Do we have any... If we have any French readers at home, please help us with this. <laughs> and in general, just please help. Just please help us with whatever you think you can help us with. You can find us on, on Twitter at CoverMyAssCast. You can find us at Gmail at Twitter... <laughs> Twitter, Twitter. Well, it seems I'm just like never going to get seems this like right, a social media platform that never really got off the ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. Twitter. <laughs> Uh, speaking of not getting things off the ground, what do we have in store for our readers this week? Right, this book's big is there. Uh, this big book is weird. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the Halon system is leaking. Yes, I've I noticed it. Is. This week's book, thank you very much, is by Vera Chapman. It's called The Three Damosels. Mm. It is warming, romantic, and haunting, as according to The Times. The it Times, doesn't, yeah. It doesn't say which times, but... The times that we live in. It could be the Newtonbury upon Times times. That's not a real thing. Eh, it could be. Actually, that's frightening. Yes, it is. Do you know there was a television program called Rosemary and Time? Yeah, and, and it was, was a it well, it was a it was sort of a murder cozy. Two women, one of them I think was a retired police officer, and both of them solved gardening murders. Oh, through gardening! Wow, that must have been a thrilling. There's a lot of episodes. It's like her. What's her name? It's like she must be like a very successful uh, murderer. Multiple, murderer, yeah, yes. Uh, because wherever she shows up, there's like always a murder. Oh no, Jessica Fletcher. That's Jessica the one. Fletcher, yes. She is an angel of death who descends upon unwitting towns. Mm. But even worse is is stuff like what was it like the Midsummer Murders or something like that? Like this this town, this this little town that is that has canonically fewer than a thousand people, which has had two hundred murders in it since 1977, <laughs> yes. and nobody's asking questions. No. So yes, the book is it, it's got a quite lovely cover. It's got a lady in a blue gown uh, standing in a Meadow lit by fireflies, I suppose, or maybe just generic little magical. Oh, those things. are some of the the, the damsel flies. Oh, damsel. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, they're a little glowing, uh, that glowing was a in very the meadow. Nice touch. Yes, I mean everything's glowing, right? It's super soft focus. It's, it's the art style as well, yeah. with like a kind of like soft focus, soft porn uh, unicorn in the background. <laughs> soft uh, porn unicorn. <laughs> You've got to stop naming the episodes so early <laughs> on. People like to like sit around and wonder, oh, when is it going to come up? No, yeah. the soft porn unicorn is obviously going to be the title of this week's <laughs> episode. <laughs> and, um, a, and, a, and a magical castle beyond yeah, that. Two castles, really, with a bridge between them. Listen, wh- why would it be, if they have a bridge between them, wouldn't it be the same castle still? Oh, it could be that one of them is, like, considering the construction, one of them, the castle on the right is a towering isle of its own. Then there's a bridge leading over to the other castle. Yeah. Which is like almost like the guardhouse for the first castle. But I guess over time that it got built out so much that it became a castle on its own. Yeah, but then th- there you go, like... It's just like with the book fort or the, with the Romans. You can like re- you, you have the first castle to defend, and then <laughs> yeah. if that falls, you can retreat across the bridge. And then, like in the worst case scenario, you destroy the bridge. And then you're sitting there in your second castle, or actually the first castle. Uh, there, there. See, it's still the same defensive structure for right. the same for the same people. Like the whole thing counts as, as one castle. It's just built over over several aisles, as you point out. Unless the- unless it was historically two castles, which through through some treaty or joint marriage or something decided they would join forces and then build a connecting bridge. To Overco- to symbolize that, overcoming yeah. the differences between the various uh, parties involved. Ah, oh, that seems uh, uh, that seems entirely plausible. These uh, these two castles on the named Porkney Islands. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. There's also a big honking unicorn there. Yes, isn't it? it's our focus even. Uh, super like glowing and that seems to be a trait of unicorns that they kind of have that glowing aura to each, especially to maidens. Yes. Which is the uh, the principal figure here? The, as you as you mentioned, the uh, the blonde maiden in the blue gown. It's a lovely gown. It it's is not exactly it's... traveling wear, though. No, I don't think. That. And she's holding something which is even more out of focus. Which I, it looks like she's picked some flowers, I suppose. Pick some flowers, or like crushing a handful of damselflies. Damsel and actually, is that a little fairy on her? I didn't even notice that at first. Oh, was there? Yeah, look at that little thing on her near her uh, right foot. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, yeah. those must be the. Hmm. Well, those, may, those may, 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 maybe those are the damsel damsel flies after they've pupated and turned into. Oh, but 
that's kind of appropriate oh. because the, the the damselfly obviously it has a it has a, a, a larval stage and then it goes through a chrysalis and it yeah. emerges as what we know as the damselfly yes. and then apparently it also has a third stage mm. where it's, where it's I guess this sort of fairy damsel wasp yeah. and this sort of three stage life cycle is kind of appropriate oh, that's considering very much the a theme we're seeing through the rest of the book yes exactly because. The heroine of today's book is a character that we have seen before. I guess this is a further down the lifetime of our uh, lovely Mifanwi. Is that how you pronounce it? Mifanwi. Mifanwi. Yeah, I got it almost right. Yeah. Mifanwi, the dildo smith's daughter yes. from, oh, uh, the episode was called, and I'm going to use that tone of voice that usually works for me. Uh, it was episode 36, so that's like... Oh, that was in the first half of the life cycle of this. Oh, no, we're doing thirds, so this is episode 78 divided by three. How does that go? Oh, that's actually possible. That's that's 26. So then it's in the, the matron stage of this uh, of this podcast. Mm. It would be the damselfly stage before yes. the, the terror was. Yes. Uh, Mifandwi, who has had a, a bit of a um, falling out with her demon Bellafon. Yes, that's right. Because the, the, the main plot of the previous uh, instance of Mifandwi's story was as a, as a dildo smith's daughter wanted to escape the the destiny that was foisted upon her in her small village and pursue her own fate as a travelling xylophone soloist and through the uh, agency of a sisterhood who were called the Morwinian High Iron, that's right. Oh, very good. Yeah, the Iron Maidens. I'm amazed that you remember that. Thank you. She gained the uh, the companionship of a, a, a demon, Bellafon, uh, with whom she made sensational music and off she trotted toward the toward the horizon to to seek her destiny but unfortunately as so many uh, young people experience when you when you reach the cusp of adulthood it never quite turns out Either how way you, imagined. you imagined it and uh, i mean after mifan we came to the conclusion that like she was not maybe not cut out to be the soloist that she thought she would be and instead went for the partnership with bellafon and she enjoyed moderate amounts of great success uh, in the uh, in her exploits, after a while, as so often happens with popular musical uh, ensembles, is that yes. there is a falling out over creative difference. Creative differences. Oh, you're holding words. me back. And yep. then maybe their bandmates like write a song about it. I mean, like <laughs> wish, you, wish you were here is like a typical Pink Floyd uh, uh, song about that. And uh, uh, you're so vain. I bet you think this song's about you. Oh yes, uh, and I'll always love you, like Dolly Parton, which is like actually not a song about oh, yeah. like, forgotten love. It's about basically her saying goodbye to her producer. And yet, it's a it's a it's a very popular like uh, first dance at a wedding standby. That's, that's a, it's a farewell song. It's like yeah, but it's it like uh, every breath you take is about stalking. True, and, true. like the father daughter dance. Somehow, very often, I've been to I've been to several weddings where they played that. Where they played that, like and they probably didn't know. I guess not. It just sounds. It sounds so. It's just so sweet. I've been watching you. Ooh. Yeah. Well. When you actually listen to it, in the same way that oh, what was it? Extreme. Uh, more than words. Oh. More than words. Yeah. That's a dude pressuring his girlfriend into having sex with him because, oh. like, you know, it's the only way that you can show me how you really feel. If you oh. really felt, it's super More gross. Than- <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's, yeah, that's that's a funny thing when people like, don't listen to lyrics about songs and just, like, hear this one thing and attribute it to something entirely different. So I guess that's kind of what happened with with Mifanwi and, 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 and yeah. Bellafon. Like, he kept sneaking in all of these fairly cynical messages into her lovely xylophone ballads attracting a very different audience than she enjoyed and eventually she had to sort of and split And they went off. there, they parted their ways and, yeah. and Mifanwi is like... She's even gone off the xylophone. Oh, you, yeah. You, you see she, she's not even carrying a single, like, marimbo or... No. <laughs> I guess she's like... Count- <laughs> marimba is plural, isn't it? I would think so. Okay. Oh, no, it's a marimba. I mean, it's like, it's like a pair of trousers. Is it like singular or plural? I mean, you can have a pant. People talk about a pant when they're... You know, when they when they have uh, 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 when they've had one too many, yes. <laughs> when they're into haute couture, when they're when they when they do, you know, when they do. Oh, you get stuff, that. You get, the, you, you get those like jorts, which like one long leg and one short. But leg. no, it's just it's just we say pants, and then some people say our pants, like our jean. Oh god! Instead of a pair of jeans. Yes, I suppose so. No so, such problem for Mifanwi because she's got her gown. She's got. She does have her gown, and like I guess she's not into unicorn riding. Although that happens later on. Yeah. When she wanders onto the beautiful territory of, and I'm sure you can pronounce this better than I can. Uh no no go ahead no that's okay. It's like Dufrin Tunagol Dufrin 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 oh yeah, I that, think Dufrin Tinget 
Different Tinget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. 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 Fa- Different Tinget. Which I looked it up. Translates as Fates Valley. Oh, that's what it is. Yes. See, I don't. I, I don't have like the books that I read. You can't like push the words and see the translation like on your magical. Kingdom. No, I guess that's like very useful. That, but yeah, my, my Welsh. It's not very good. I can barely pronounce half the consonants, let alone the vowels. Oh, but it's uh, uh, it's 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 really not hard to learn because it's it's very phonetic, like much like Finnish. Mm-hmm. Although Finnish has a lot more fun vowels that you that you've got to be able to tell apart. No, there's only about eight. And then there's the variations. On yeah, the, I like, mean, how many A's do they have? They have the A and the R. Yeah, but it's like the same with, uh, with with the same with German and Dutch, where you have and the frankly compound English for, the compound. For, yeah, but we just English, use the same letter for English all just of makes those it up sounds. And goes along, yeah. Yes. Let's not ra- rag on English. We've done that more than once in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, just celebrating Welsh in this case. Yeah, we have. Uh, we do have our our our, our bugbears. Uh, uh, one of the many hazards uh, that beset uh, Differintinged, uh, such as other creatures that roam these these dangerous lands, are the the centicorn, whom we <laughs> remember. Yeah, like a unicorn is a lovely creature, but a centicorn has one hundred horns strewn about its body. It yeah. is a monstrous. It's yeah. like porcupine of, of of horrible proportions. I mean, it's very good for... It's very valued in Chinese, in Chinese traditional medicine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you can, like, like you cut it off and you can just, like... It's like it's a unicorn horn, but, like, no, it's from a centicorn. But they don't know that. They but, don't yeah. know that. It's and the, so you only have to harvest one to get, like, a hundred It's actually an alicorn. Alicorn? No, alicorn. alicorn. Yeah. Alicorn is the name of the horn of the unicorn. Oh, I thought an alicorn was a, a a winged unicorn. That's just a winged unicorn. No, I'm pretty sure that an alicorn... Well, unfortunately, we don't have those majestic creatures in uh, in different Tingod, Tinged. Mm. What, we, what we have instead is a far more horrible creature, uh, one of the other terrors uh, of this otherwise lovely land, the Pegasus. <laughs> Now, when you're, yeah, when an unwary traveler can, can hear the, the, the oinking of the ride of the Valkyries and, and this just, this swarm, this, this chaos. I, I tried to imagine, I tried to hum it and I could not like come up with something that sounded like horrible and as bone rattling right? and soul screeching as it was described in this book. Let's give it our best shot. <laughs> Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's nightmarish, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, so you can understand why uh, uh, why most of the people of of, of different Tinged have have retreated to the, uh, the the twin castles of the Porkney Islands mm. and and living under its protective skirts. I guess that makes why it's called the Porkney Islands now because of the uh, the Pegasus. Yeah. Now the endless onslaught of of Pegasus onto onto these lands has resulted in. I mean, there, this is something that Mifanwi notices as she as she wanders in. She notices like nobody's doing any animal husbandry. Like there are no there are no herds, but she does know, she just pass a, a, a bacon mill, yeah. uh, and inexplicably a sausage mine. Ah, those are all uh, located near the village of. I mean, again, like let's ha- let's have a Welsh pronunciation uh, contest here. Uh, Gwaelod Rhyd. Gwaelod Rhyd. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, because the double D is a is a is a th. With Rude, voiced, yes. which again I, I, I had to look it up. Translate as the village of loose bottom. <laughs> yeah, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, yeah. Very, very appropriate for a town that does Is mainly. It? Well, it's Pretty mainly pigs. Gener- so, like, yeah. I can imagine that it kind of smells. Uh, have you ever been in a pig stable? Yes, but that's the thing. They don't have swine herds. They don't have no. stables or whatever. They just have, you know, the occasional predictable attack by by a chaos of Pegasus, whom they have to defend themselves, and then from the 30, from the ruins, when thirty or forty wild hogs come. That's right, <laughs> feral hogs, exactly. Yeah. And then they all wind up in the chop shop. Well, I mean, that's a good place for a pig to hand, end up if you're if you're into sausages and bacon. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean. From the pig's point of view, I guess it would not be. But you know, from the cook's point of view, yeah, it's it's waste not, want not. It's one of the values of different ten, tinged. And and so when when Mifanwi wanders through these lands and starts to starts to realize that hey, these are a hardy people who have taken this terror and turned it into a rather a thriving local business. Like yeah, fantastic pork, consulted pork. You can have breakfast there like nowhere else. Yeah. Yes. Oh God, I'm thinking about bacon now. So yes, she makes her way into different. Yeah, that's different right. Different She finds that although the fact that the town is uh, quite thriving, uh, despite their uh, problem with the, the wild hog pigasus, yes. the, the town seems to be in mourning because the the the, the valley is uh, ruled by the three ladies known as the distressing damsels. Yes, uh, a sacred trinity. Uh, can- oh God! <laughs> <laughs> by the three ladies. Known as a Buttercup, a Bubbles, and Blossom. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Those awe-inspiring uh, uh, regal names. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, Buttercup has recently deceased. And uh, uh, filling everyone with a sense of awe, and the whole town just goes, Oh. And, I mean, maybe that's what we're seeing on the uh, on the front cover of the book. I guess it's all the little glowing buttercups which have uh, started oh, to yeah. uh, light up in the, in the, in in the, in the loss of, the, of their the, namesake. The fallen, yeah. This means that, of course, that like since the valley is always ruled by a trio of uh, damosels, it is time for a new damosel to appear. Yeah, because you've got to have three. You've got to have three. It's traditional. You have the maiden, the mother, and the crone. Yes, a, a, a popular concept in, I mean, neo-paganism is probably where we know it uh, most literally, but I think there are historical or, 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 or traditional mythical figures like like Diana or, or Hecate, as she was known for it. Like the, the, the Greeks and the Romans, they sort of had the same gods. Yeah, they, they plagiarized, I mean, the Romans plagiarized a lot from the Greeks. So. Hey, great artists, uh, great artists borrow poor artists steal. Yeah. Which I guess then Romans are the poor artists when you really think about it. They had like the the three aspects uh, yes. of Hecate slash Diana. That's the one. one. Yeah. Uh, the three aspects the, of, the three of womanhood. Uh, yes, no, that's a good one. You had the you had the fate. You had the charities. You had a whole bunch of like Persephone. Also, oh, uh, interestingly, uh, one of the one of the villagers is named uh, named after her, uh, Persephone. I don't get it. She was named after Persephone, Persephone, who's also one of the uh, the Persephone. three. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, she had her sisters uh, Dianui and and, and Hecate. <laughs> These yeah. are the Welsh forms. No, I think right. was, no, no, I get it. Uh, and and these were some of the hopefuls, hoping that with the with the regretful passing of Buttercup, obviously the 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 Trinity. Buttercup. Uh, the dis- is, 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 I guess I misspelled it on my note. I, I, it's supposed to be Buttercup. Buttercup. Yeah. Bitter. Uh, and uh, Bibbles. Uh, Bibbles and and Bluesome. And Bluesome. Yeah. <laughs> Bluesome. That's right. <laughs> uh, who were all going to like move up in rank? Like the former matron Bubbles would move up to be the the, the new crone. Become the crone, then the, the which the I don't becomes... really like as a as a as a name. Like I think there should be something something more dignified. The grandmother is the yeah, right. Uh, win, but yes, the maiden, the, the wise woman, Mifandi, who wanders in without her xylophone, but uh, she's still got a lot of knowledge that she picked up from her father, the famous dildo smith. Yes, and um, she she starts a little bit of a. Uh, a, a little bit of a trade here she like she's been doing some wood whittling and some stone grinding and uh, yeah, she, and she comes into picks up. and she comes into town with a little bit of her whittlings that she's made and like <laughs> she's immediately hailed as the new girl in town basically yeah much to the dismay of the existing girls who'd been uh, who'd been sort of buxoming themselves <laughs> jostling up to be... for position if you yeah, would exactly i mean we mentioned like persephone and, and diane we and, and, and hecate but you've also got like hillary and marjorie <laughs> and the front runner for a long time there was Rosemary, but then in comes Mifanwi, setting up her her new extremely popular business, My Willwi. Oh yeah, that's the family business. That like, is the, it's like named she, after her father. That was his name, okay. and she was named after her mother with Mifanwi. Oh god, no, it's a family name. You see. I actually missed that joke all this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a family name. Okay, I, don't, yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand what you're talking about. No, oh God. <laughs> yes, her uh, little shop, my will wees and, and daughter, I suppose. Uh, and yeah, that's right. We only have the daughter here. Uh, oh, no, nothing, I, I, nothing. I don't get it. Like you seem to be giggling about something that I'm I just. Not giggling. I just, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm more like rolling my eyes so hard that I can see the back of my skull. <laughs> yeah, well. So she tries to pick up this uh, this trade for dildo smithing, and she does well for a while. But she is, I mean, she has caught a bad case of xylophone elbow from uh, playing the xylophone all yeah. this time, and she's actually not that, like. It's probably not a long-term solution for her. The whittling still works, but working the lathe really pl- uh, plays it's havoc with really, her uh, 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 yeah. side of an elbow. So, like the, the the way traditional dildo smithing goes is like you run the the base material on the lathe, and then after you get the general shape roughed out, then then the whittling comes into place, and like the details and the yeah, the, yeah, rig- really the ridges and veins the, are kind of like worked smooth, into the surface. Yeah. And all the really great dildo smiths they do the fo- the forming and shaping, but actually for the smoothing and finishing, it gets us of the smoothing and finishing artist. It's known kind of like, as a knob polisher. Yes, exactly. That's right. Yeah, no, it's, I, I remember that. Yeah. So, yes, she learns about this and she, she thinks it's a really good system where, like, there's a, a, a preservation of knowledge with the uh, with the, few, the three positions and how they move yeah, on from one yeah. to the next. And well, I mean, almost th- like almost like hermit crabs, really. Oh, when they have this little chain of moving up there, when a hermit crab finds a shell which is really too big or too small for it, and then you get, the other ones they sort of line up next to it, and all of them sort of sort of swapsies. Exactly, and then one of them goes like, "Okay, this is mine," and then the next one goes. Like, like, oh, this fits, and then, like, yeah, there, there's a whole line of crabs, like, moving up to the next shell. Yeah. What if there's any complaints about the state that one of them left it in? Sometimes it goes wrong. Sometimes okay. it's like one of them tries it and then wants his old one back, and then it's... 
uh, and it sorry, really sucks taken, to be that crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's he going to do? The other guy's already moved in. And he's now in the protective thing. Fight and kill each other. Yeah. That kind of, like, viciousness is something that my family comes to realize is actually par for the course here in uh, in different Inged. Because it's not all as as idyllic and as as, as ruggedly self reliant as she as she first imagined. Well, it turns out that quite soon that the two remaining dams, damsels, uh, Bubbles and Blossom, uh, invite her over yeah. to the castle uh, to like test the waters to she, see if she's uh, the right kind of material. Yeah, and uh, they explain the way that things work to her, and it's very much that they 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 control the thing. These are very powerful women, and they have the the, the power to uh, basically perform the way the three fates do. The maiden spins the thread, which, was, ah, yes. which used to be blossom. The mother measures the life or the length of the thread, and the crone, which used to, unfortunately is the past buttercup, bitterkip, yeah, b- b- bitterkip, yes, <laughs> bibbles and blossom, yes, signifying like the thread of life, exactly, right, but... in, in quite a literal way, it turns out here. Because that, that is literally the function that these three, three damosels perform in this valley. Uh, and this is why the, the villagers seem to be so successful in the hunt. Because the ladies sit in their tower and yes. they examine the thread of the hog which is attacking the village. The villagers have to do their their part as well. But when it like sometimes when it becomes a little bit too dangerous, then uh, then Bitterkip used to just like take her scissors, uh, scissors. 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 <laughs> yeah. and make the schnip. <laughs> They're not Swedish. This is Wales we're Sorry. talking about. Not Swedish. <laughs> I make the snip. Look, it's not snip. the the thing about Welsh accents. It's got this. It's got this lovely rhythm. It's got the, it's like this no R's over- and snip. So you can't. No, I know, I know, snip. I know. Snip. But, and obviously, there there are many accents in uh, Wales. In, in Wales. Well, this is North and South Wales, and we, we talked about that a few episodes ago. Uh, just memory is sort of hazily floating yeah. in and out of my brain. <laughs> Who's to say? It's almost as if the the cord has been cut. There's a lot of like thread imagery. Yes, tap- when it when it comes to tapestries all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm thinking about like other other myths that I know. Uh, 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 oh, Rapelstiltje, what's she Rump- called? Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin and, yeah. and Rapunzel. I mean, you have the you have the spinning wheel. You have the loom of fate. Yeah, the loom in uh, Sleeping Beauty, who's, who who pricked herself on the loom. Uh, it's a spinning wheel again there. Yeah. Sorry, spinning wheel. No, spinning wheel. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Spinning wheel is a, spinning wheel is a one-dimensional yeah, sorry, sorry. generator, and a yeah, loom yeah. is a two-dimensional generator. No, okay. Now, what is three-dimensional fabric? Well, I guess that would be the fabric of life. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like, which like includes that. time, and uh, so uh, and rosemary. Tra- we're back on culinary again, are we? Uh, sorry, I mean, tradi- rosemary. Tra- traditionally, yes. pork is done with sage. Sage. Well, like. you know, if it was Welsh, it would probably be sage. Uh, who's talking? Who's who's Swedish now? Look, okay, it's a little bit. It's a bit of this and a bit of that, isn't it? I do remember how J.R.R. Tolkien, yeah. when he was devising languages for, for the elves, Tengwar Quenya and Tengwar Sindarin, I'm a nerd, shoot me, was inspired by his favourite languages, Finnish and, yeah. uh, and Welsh, both of which are quite unrelated. Obviously, Finnish is unrelated to fucking anything on the, on, mm. on the planet. But, uh, but he loved that both of them were so, uh, so phonetic and oh. so and so and beautifully lost, and, and there's so much stuff in it like even the names are like like he, he yeah, made up like gorgeous. he's called, called Pippin because that's just like the, the, the character in the original language which he pretended to be just a translator of yes that's named right named after an apple and other things like it's 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 all incredibly uh, connected and convoluted at times and it he all has a, meanings and yeah. uh, double and and uh, he was he was a, like an enthusiast linguist who became a creative anthropologist in order to justify these languages and then he became a novelist in order to justify the anthropology that he yeah. was in, uh, inventing it's like what's the first thing you do when you want to write a fantasy book you invent three different languages well <laughs> so right, you're, you're not you're not wrong eh. anyway so she gets initiated into the fates basically yeah, uh, and uh, clearly wins out the choice between the, uh, the, the the local girls. Basically, none of them stand a chance. None, none of them, them have like chance. the like bubbles and bloss- uh, b- 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 bibbles. No, <laughs> are uh, more than happy to get Mifwandi into the into the game. Yeah, because they see in Mifanwi and her dildo smithing, they see someone who has a real upward path. All of these other girls, they're fine. They're all maidenly. But mm-hmm. none of them already have the makings of a, of a fine, solid, leading matron. Exactly. Them, and like the, Mifanwi has. And the, the whole dildo smithing really puts a, uh, a boon to the uh, fertility in the village. And it's uh, basically oh, when, yeah. when the first new child is born, even though it's like that wasn't really like uh, Mifandi's hand in it well because it's way, it's, it's way too soon but it basically it gets credited to her in the new position and also at that point with Mifandi the, f- the first child born in the village after Mifandi takes on the role of the of the maiden 
signifies the fact that she has grown into her role, and which signifies the fact that the other two has moved have moved into theirs, and death in the village can once again start. <laughs> Shortly after that, the, the first death in the village occurs. Yeah, they seem to have like a numerous fixes, like a fixed number of people well, that are allowed it's, to. It's the fact that the, the role wasn't filled. Like the mother hadn't moved into the role of the crone oh, yet. Oh, was that it? Yes, and, I and had And therefore, figured. like for, yes, first, Mafundi right. had to like fulfill her part, and with that, like all three positions have now been filled again. And yes. At which point now Bibbles can like take on the role of cutting the threads. Uh, so, like Bibbles is is when she ascends to to cronehood or no the wise womanhood, uh-huh. which is uh, I think a, a much better. Okay. And then she moved up, and yeah. she's uh, uh, and now she's the, the the wise woman, and she's taking responsibility for the finality of of life. I mean, Blissom, the previous ma- maiden, find herself like struggling a little bit with matronhood. It's a it's a position that she's always known that she was going to move up toward. But like many young people, when she when she's finally on the cusp of what she always thought was her destiny, it's not quite what she imagined. And much like much like uh, uh, Mifanui, they start to sort of doubt this system a little bit because there is a a natural flow to it there is a there is a symmetry and a and, and a beauty to it but at the same time there is something missing from it that both of them acknowledge well she kind of like discovers and this is what Mifandi does as well that like all is not quite as peaceful in the valley right. as that they should show to be and that it turns out that a lot of the tributes that the the three uh, damoselles get from the villagers are not entirely as Voluntary, voluntary yeah. as they made you think, because now that her role is like rather than spinning the thread, uh, it's become measuring the thread of life, and she's noticing that Bitterkip is uh, cutting some of those threads a little bit short. Yeah, and this using the way using this as a way to basically threaten and blackmail the villagers into making sure that the tribute keeps coming. Yeah, and 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 soon like uh, 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 Marjorie and Rosemary. Are are no more, alas. They have their thread cut. Yes. Yeah, their 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 flowers were plucked before before blooming. Mm. And it turns out that uh, some of this excess life threat, which is being cut from these girls, ah, yes. is being collected as a sacrifice to further the damosel's power. It is yes, fueled is- into their castle basically, and it's the it's the power that they run on, and that their the whole system here in the valley seems to be based upon. From which, as Mifanwi discovers, they are they are creating and summoning these horrible creatures, such as the centicorn and the pigasus, which yep. are not native to this uh, this land Valley at all, and and thus they perpetuate another cycle, which is you know it's it's again another cycle of three, a cycle of life, cycle of story, but it's like a little bit heavy handed from the from the damosels involved here, and it's something that uh, that Mifanwi is is resolved to end once she realizes this uh, this terrible injustice, and she finds a partner in in Biblos, who has not comfortably settled in like she was the one as you mentioned who discovered the the, the bizarre practices that were happening among the the matron and the and, and the wise woman yeah. which she cannot tolerate anymore seeing that Mifandwi has the same problems with the system that she had when she was uh, first initiated into it she decides this may be a time to break the uh, tradition so to speak so she measures a, a somewhat shorter uh, 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 thread sneaking it past Bubbles' uh, suspicions and meanwhile in all of this she needs an ally and she needs a new system something mm-hmm. that's that's better or a new example to to set something with which Mifanwi agrees and after 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 many conversations Mifanwi wanders off into the field I think that's where we where we find her on yeah. the, on the on the cover passing by a, a by a unicorn whom she quickly just strangles to death and then drowns in the pond yeah that's like, uh, that, that, that really caught me by surprise yeah well she needed to get the unicorn solution oh. so she takes a big swig of that how did she know about that about look the she's solution? a very well traveled young woman I guess so yeah and in the course of her travels like she she discovered a lot about herself so we see her like okay it's pretty gruesome where she's strangling this beautiful animal uh, to death drowning it in the pond drinking from the from the pond uh, and as she as she does so like she makes choices that she'd been pondering before and was never sure about she cuts her hair she takes the hem off of her, uh, her dress takes off the sleeve wrapping it more tightly around her chest to aid with the various changes that are becoming possible thanks to the unicorn solution mm-hmm. emerging as henry henry yes the her her true self because she has decided like neither matronhood maidenhood nor nor wise womanhood is for me like so it's going to be henryhood i mean she thought about naming herself after her father but my will we was kind of on the nose i mean for some people it is but <laughs> And I think Henry is a, is a lovely, it's a fine Welsh Henry. name. She approaches Blissom, who is just seen to, uh, just as being visited upon Butherkup, 
and the 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 love that had been uh, blossoming between between Blossom and Mifanui. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a it's a bit of an adjustment. We are still the mm. the same people inside. I mean, poor uh, Bubbles meets a fate which is similar to that of the unicorn. But yeah, it's pretty literal, like I mean, strangling someone with their own life thread, like a garrote. It wasn't exactly cut. I mean, it was it was wrapped three times around her neck, like and then pulled taut. Yeah, I mean, it's like you might as well get beheaded, decapitated at that point. Right. I mean, even the time that the Bubbles spent like making handles for the thread, I thought, what was going on? Yeah, and she puts the gloves on. Like, like oh, are you making grim. bobbins for some French lace or something? No, Turns out, no, no. no it was just like handles for the thread of life <sighs> like, i mean everybody could use some handles on the thread of life i suppose but not necessarily in that regard <laughs> and you've also got to stop naming episodes twice <laughs> anyway so yeah aside from the uh, aside from the brutality i thought it was a very good book and i really appreciate it like i i really sort of related to 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 henry yeah and his journey from uh, from his journey from maidenhood yes yeah in, into henryhood so how are we going to rate this book Okay, so this is one of those unconventional ones where you ask me before I'm able to yeah. ask you. Okay, now I'm going to look at this. I mean, obviously have thri- we have trinities. We have. I think we should three name to it- the power of three is twenty seven. No, I think we should like rate this on uh, somewhere out of forty to fifty uh, mm-hmm. feral hogs. Why do you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So I was going to say, why do you ask me when you clearly know the answer yourself? But the answer is so good. Yes, out of out of forty to fifty feral hogs, how do we rate? God, what was it? The uh, Three Damozels by Vera I will, Chapman. Uh, yes, I will give it forty-eight out of forty to fifty feral hogs. <laughs> okay, so that's 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 uh, that's that's tentatively difficult because it might actually be higher than the than the the maximum. Oh, I, I mean, if it's I mean, forty feral hogs, I then we were rating on on scale of forty to fifty out of oh 40 between to 50. forty and fifty. Yeah. Oh, okay, now I understand. <laughs> See, this is the thing. Like, it's 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 progressive understanding. Oh, so it's it's actually given me a bit of inspiration for the the further offense of the of the library. That yes. uh, we'll see if if I still remember that next week. Just make sure to uh, run any hogs that you're going to bring in here by Tristan. Okay, <laughs> I'm sure they'll have something to say about it. Uh, speaking of reviews, you can look down at your podcasting device, and you should should be seeing an opportunity to leave a little review or a, a, a couple of stars. We would love to hear from you if you want to reach out and let us know how you've been enjoying things on uh, uh, Cover My Ass Cast at. Twitter, nope. I got it right for a while, but we had to cover my asscast on Twitter. Cover my asscast at gmail.com. Certainly, if you have a new cover that you think we should give a shot, uh, we'd love to hear from you. But in the meantime, what do we have in store for our readers next week? Next week's book is by Mark Shearman. It's called Streaking for Mother. Very appropriate. And after that, we'll see Streaking for the Crone, the sequel. But uh, that about covers it. Thank you for joining us at Cover My House, where baffling books are reviewed, but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we only only judge your book. By its cover. cover. Oh, I've got a sort of rasp to my voice. Oh, dear, yeah, it does sound good. Maybe I'm heading into whatever the, the what's the male version of Meeks Oh, the, 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 the boy? Uh, B-O-Y. Uh, the, 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 the twink. Oh, the jock. The You've got the twink, the jock, and the daddy. The That's it. Jock. Yeah, there we go.